All right, what's going on everybody? So we are working on this thing again, trying to get the turbo conversion done. Um, we're hoping to get this thing started up today. Um, a little bit of the things we worked on the last time, since the last video was uh, we made a little bracket here for the uh, coolant expansion tank, um, which we have to cap off a couple of these because we're, we're not able to use a turbo radiator because there's, there's no uh, nipple here. Because without switching the whole core support, the lower core support you can't fit a turbo radiator but it's coming together pretty good uh, we need to focus on wiring today so uh, the main things we need to wire is just basically we unbolted this whole assembly from a turbo car so this has um, the map sensor it has the check valve for the map sensor it has the um, factory boost controller on here so I'm probably gonna pull this back out because there's a there's another connector in here for uh, the automatic shift solenoid that we don't need that obviously because it's a five speed so um but there should be just a couple wires i think about seven different wires we need to make a harness for run them into the cabin um it's just going to be mostly five volt reference wires and some grounds and we need to run those into the ecu and then we can uh, pin them in the correct locations and move the cam and crank sensor wires around um, at the ECU, so um, that's all correct for that computer. We're just going to basically compare the pinouts for, an e for the 22T computer versus the 22E and change what we need to change. But um, yep, yeah, we got the intake all on here. We put the we're using a factory downpipe from uh, this is all all these parts are from the white um, car that's getting the STI conversion. So we're able to just take everything from this that we no longer needed and convert this tuning into a factory turbo. So um, we got the uh, JDM air to water intercooler in here. We put this little uh, little cover on here. It turned out really nice. Um, we got the factory boost controller all hooked up. Um, we just needed that Silica 90. So all this is just recycled parts from the other car. Um, but we just kind of went through, didn't really film a lot of this, just like putting the actual power steering pump and everything mounted on here. AC is all back on. We already showed how all the lines are ran. Um, we just have a couple wires over here to actually hook up power to the pump. That'll go to the battery with the, you know, the little relay there. The trigger key on um, so it's not running while the car's off. Uh, we need to hook up the, this is our oil pressure gauge here. So we need to run this into the car, um, figure out a place to mount the gauge, get some power for that. So. All this has to be done um, today because we're hoping to take this thing on a big trip tomorrow um, way out into the, the wilderness. This is supposed to be our wilderness car and it's way behind schedule so, um, so we, we're pushing it pretty pretty close here to try to take this thing. But another thing we reused was this uh, just a catch can. This is uh, the old catch can setup off of the white 91 SS because um, that thing is probably going to go to an AOS. Just need something for this this car. I mean, um, it's we're only gonna be running about 10 pounds of boost, but um, we need to have some kind of uh, catch can set up for the PCV system. So uh, we still need to put fluids in it. We got the the old radiator, everything back in. Um, she's looking pretty sweet overall. So um, I need to start making a harness. Uh, I'm gonna take what I'm gonna do first is just strip this back. Um, get all this shielding off here. That's the map sensor. So, um, oh, we swapped the, the map sensor over too. This is ha you have to have a 22T map sensor for the 22T computer. So, got that in there with the Apexi intake. And this is all mounted and looks really nice. So, um, yeah, let's get started on that. Okay, just pulled this thing off. So, you can see this is just basically three bolts in this entire assembly comes off here um, we cut this harness way back so um, we have the the old map sensor connector here so I'm just gonna quickly strip all this off um, and pull off this thing off the back of here because this is for the automatic and we don't need that um, and we'll just organize the wires I'll show you what we need to do okay I got this reduced down uh, quite a bit so it's a lot simpler now you can see what we're dealing with so we just got two wires for the check valve that regulates pressure to the MAF, or MAP. Um, 
and then we have the actual map sensor connector which is it's just three wires this one's um, shielded so we'll try to keep the shielding on it I'm sure it's there for uh, interference reasons but um, we'll try to pull this back extend these wires and then we just have two uh, wires here for the boost controller so um, they should just be a, basically a 5 volt reference um, so we just need to be able to supply 5 volts and then either hook up whatever if it has a signal wire that goes to the ECU or if it's a ground I gotta make sure um, sometimes five, some of these 5 volts come out of the ECU so gotta make sure we're getting each one right uh, we'll compare our diagrams and everything but first I need to make a harness to actually get this these Let's see what we got. Four, five, six, seven wires. Yeah. So get these seven wires in the car. Okay. So <clears throat> I had that spare harness um, that somebody was going to throw away. So it's just kind of reason I had spare parts. I pulled out um, a whole length of wire. So these are seven different wires. I'm probably going to need a couple more um, for gauges and stuff. But I just depinned them from the connector. I don't think these are the right pins to go into the ECU, but uh, we'll find some. And, but it's, it's the correct gauge wire, so we might just have to put new pins on them. Um, but they should be long enough to run through the whole car. Um, over here, so I got some some extra. This is what I pulled it from, is one of these connectors. This is like a GD style harness. So right now I'm just working on getting the gauges set up because we need to have boost. Um, this is a oil pressure gauge. And then eventually we're gonna have a wide band, but we don't have a wide band kit right now. So one of these is just gonna be open, but we can at least get the boost in oil pressure set up so we know that the car is running okay. Um, get the boost dialed in. I think we're gonna run about nine or 10 pounds. Um, you know, something pretty reasonable that the thought computer is gonna like. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I got all my wires stripped back. I got uh, some connectors all crimped on here. So now I'm going to put this back in the car, um, and we can start making the actual harness to run inside. Okay, so as far as the harness, um, this is the wire I'm going to be using from that other harness. And this is a first gen ECU connector. And so this has the right style of pins that I need. And it should have enough of them in here that I can take these pins out. Um, and what I'll probably do is I'll just take these wires and then barrel connect them onto these wires here and I can just plug these pins directly into the ECU in the spots we need that uh, are missing. But uh, we'll show that here in a second. Okay, so we're working on the wiring here. So I tied in the map sensor wires in here, all these things. Um, basically, I'm just going to be making a list and writing down, um, you know, which which uh, sensor wires go to which colors because all the colors change. But all of these are different colors, so I can keep the, keep track. Like this is the only yellow one with a red stripe, and so we just make a list. Uh, I'm going to wrap this whole thing up. Um, I'm actually going to integrate the oil pressure sensor right here into this harness here. And so we're going to wrap all this up, run this one bundle of wires through the firewall, and then we could just use our list to run things into the ECU. And uh, so once this is all done, we'll skip ahead to that. That's the important part. <clears throat> okay, so as far as ECU wiring, um, I got this old connector. I just pulled some of these wires out. So we're only going to need probably, I think, four or five of them, not too many. Um, so mainly we're going to need to wire in the map sensor, which is going to be these three wires. And then we have like the purge control solenoid. It's going to go into one of those. And then we really just need to swap over a couple um, into different spots, like the cam and crank need to be switched. Um, I'm going to put a, di a, a little um, wiring diagram on the screen right here so you can see that this, uh, they're pretty, all the wiring is pretty much the same. There's just a few that are in different spots and a few in the NA connectors that um, are empty, like the map sensor and a few things like that, like the purge valve on like F47 or whatever it says. Um, so we're just gonna need to go through here and add these wires. Okay, so coming down here, 
we got our wires ran through here. This is our bundle. We just got the ECU unplugged. These four yellow pins here are uh, the ECU connectors. So we need to go through the, and add in the wires we need to. Um, we need to chop this down first. Okay, so we got our gauges all hooked up. Um, I just tied in the ground, this right here. Um, we teed the, the powers together right back in here. So we just teed the two gauge powers together to one, tie that into this one over here that has a relay on it that already runs through the firewall. Um, this one's our signal that goes into that harness that we made. And so now we just have these that need to hook up to either our sensor ground or directly into the ECU um, for voltage reference and stuff like that. So we'll get to that next. Okay, we got a uh, map sensor wired in right here. Let's plug those three pins into the empty connections. This will obviously all be wrapped up and nice, but it's using my diagram. And we've got old turbo connectors to compare to. And between the diagram and this, we can get it all right. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what we just did. So these three here in this bundle, uh, there's this bundle and this bundle, and they're in the two smallest connectors. And one is uh, the cam sensor and one is the crank sensor. The gray wire is the shield, because this is like a shielded wire. Um, and then the other two are positive and negative, and basically all three of those go in a row, and they just had to be swapped um, between the connectors. So those three were where those three are, and vice versa. And uh, the order is the same, even though the wire colors are different side to side. So just follow the wiring diagram and basically just swap over those three between those three or between those two connectors and keep them in the same order and you should be good okay so we got the boost controller and um boost controller map sensor and the uh, pressure exchange solenoid which ties in with the map sensor um all tapped into where they go um basically what we found is that this wiring diagram um, which we'll put in the screen so you can actually read it, uh, which is really helpful because it has both turbo and non-turbo information, does not have wire color. Um, and so what we did was uh, we found that on one of our other cars, the wire colors at the ECU match the wire colors uh, at the actual solenoid, like the boost control solenoid and everything. So we used these connectors to determine what wire color needs to go where. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda go over these real quick just so you can see them so that in case you don't have these, you could pause it um, and actually see what wire color you're trying to tap in, like this green wire right here. Um, we had to add that one. We had to add, let's see, this uh, black one with a white stripe right there. Right there in pin three on that one. Um, and then the ECU one, or the crank and cam sensor ones were on the two small connectors. We just swapped those and we added, let's see. Let me find the other ones that we added real quick. Um, the other three that we added were on these, this connector right here, which is, uh, where did it go? This one on the car, we added those three, which are those three right there. So now all we should have left is these two wires are for voltage supply to the uh, boost controller and the map sensor. Um, we checked on the other car, they're both 12 volts. Um, so we're gonna tap these in, we're gonna tie these together and then tap them in uh, somewhere else in the car we'll have to find a good 12 volt source um, but this stuff can all be tidied up now it's all tied in obviously I'll make it look a lot nicer I've got the tur turbo ECU in there I don't know if you can even see it 
I can't even show it to you. There it is. So the ECU is in there, so I just gotta plug in the connectors and then wrap these up so they look nicer and, you know, tape it up, zip tie it up, make it look better than it does. And if you're wondering, this crap I did not install, that was uh, the aftermarket alarm from Car Toys. So good job, Car Toys. Okay, <clears throat> hooked our battery up, um, got our intercooler pump. Um, oh no, the battery died. Get the intercooler stuff all powered up, so we unplugged the injectors. So now we're going to try to crank it and see if we get uh, oil pressure. Okay, so we're still working away in the dark. Um, we had one mishap where the oil pressure sensor for the gauge actually had to um, be getting ground because it's meant to be directly grounded into the block, and I have it on this hose, so we ended up just taking the uh, rubber off the peak lamp and then clamping it on the fatter part and bolting it down, and it works just fine. The only other issue is that I accidentally hooked up the intercooler pump to um, my fog light wiring, so <laughs> with the, when the fog lights come on, the intercooler pumps, but it does crank and get oil pressure. That's oil pressure. We have the injectors unplugged right now. So, I think we're ready to try and start it. A little ticky. The throttle pin or something? Are you not touching the throttle? No. <laughs> Maybe it needs to be adjusted. Yeah. It's still ticking a little bit, but that's probably just the lifters. We need to get the idle figured out because it's idling pretty low right now. And it kind of wants to die, so we need to figure out how to get, that, get it to idle up a little bit. It wants to idle at like 400 RPM, and that's not good. All right, well, it runs. Um, we're having some weird issues with the oil pressure gauge where it's kind of showing like it's reading really low. Um, but I'm not really sure I trust it, so we're gonna maybe try a different gauge or something, but there's no check engine lights, everything runs, so as far as the swap is concerned, like we may, may have an engine issue, but as far as the swap is concerned, it works. So um, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, hopefully this helps if you're trying to convert your car to run on a, a turbo setup, a 22T stock computer at least. But yeah, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, so before we end this video, it is the gauge. The oil pressure gauge is broken. It's not the motor. The motor's fine. <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about doing this swap, post it in the comments. Uh, we're always here to help. So, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Peace.